Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Sandeep Pote. Uh, I am a commerce consultant and a two times head code technology MVP. In this video, I'm going to show how to create a Docker image um, with a simple web app, color and font application. It's built on Python and serve the uh, web page. Uh, once we create the image, uh, we'll create a Docker container and then test that web page, uh, which is hosted in the Docker. Uh, after that, we'll push the image to the Docker Hub uh, repository and uh, then we'll create a Kubernetes resources uh, or the pod and the containers using that custom repository. And we'll also show uh, using our commands and arguments um, within the Kubernetes. So uh, before I show the demo, um, a quick walkthrough on how we create the images uh, within the Docker. Uh, so Docker daemon helps to um, uh, create the images and the containers, which is in the Docker host. Um, so in this case, we'll create a, a image uh, with, the, with the base image as a Python version 3.6. And then on top of it, we'll have our own custom application, which will serve a web page um, with the arguments uh, specifying what color and the font that web page should, should display. So we'll create a custom image uh, in the Docker first. And after the image is created, uh, we'll push that image to a, a Docker registry, that is Docker Hub, um, within our uh, own um, account. So for creating an image, we'll use Docker build command. Uh, if you want to pull any existing images, like in this case, we'll um, use Python 3.6. So we use the Docker pull pull command here. Uh, and uh, if you want to test um, your uh, application, uh, we'll use a Docker run command to create a container and uh, and test the web app. So, uh, so in this case, until now, uh, we are just working on the Docker to create image and push the image to the uh, Docker repository. Once we have that image in the Docker repository, we'll use that image and create a Kubernetes resources. Uh, and in this case, we'll create a pod uh, having a container um, uh, which has that web application hosted, uh, which will sit within the node um, and within our Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cluster. So a quick walkthrough, what will the Docker image uh, uh, contain um, and in, in this case if you see there's a, there's a command that's used um, uh, from which will first pull the base image that is Python 3.6 as our application is based on the Python uh, it's using the Alpine version which is the lightest version of the Python 3.6 and then thereafter it will install the flask and flask is used to expose the web application to serve the web application from within the container <laughs> It will copy all the code that we have, like a Docker file, or we have a Python uh, uh, file, which will have the logic of um, selecting the font and the color um, if, if the arguments are not provided. So if the arguments are provided, then it will display the uh, font and color, uh, or else it will choose randomly. So that logic contains within the uh, Python. And then it will also have a template, that HTML template, which will serve as a web page. Uh, if you see here, the application is exposed here on the port 8080 um, and the entry point to the application is app.py, which is a Python file. So using this Docker file, we'll first create an image uh, using the Docker build command. This will create an image within our local machine. Um, and if you want to test the, uh, test the web application, we'll have to uh, use the Docker run command to create a container um, and this container will expose, will be, uh, the, the application will be exposed on port 8080. Uh, so that in, on local machine, we can test uh, before we could start creating the Kubernetes resources, etc. So uh, earlier we saw the Docker file, uh, what, what it contains. Uh, now, once we are happy uh, and we have tested uh, in the web application hosted on Docker, um, we'll have to create a, a account in the Docker Hub uh, and create a repository. Uh, and so in this case, I have, I have created an account called Sandeep Pote, 
and uh, a repository called as web app dash color and font yeah so first we'll have to create um, the repository in the docker hub and once that's done uh, in our local machine we'll tag the image that we created earlier the custom image uh, with the uh, with uh, uh, with this repository yeah the account name slash your repository name yeah and once it's once it's tagged then we have to log into the docker um, and push the image to this repository so this will be the next step uh, once we have created the image uh, of mm, we'll have to tag that image and then push the image to the docker hub now once uh, uh, we have the image in the docker hub uh, we will start creating uh, kubernetes resources and in this case we'll create a pod uh, which, uh, which is named as web app color font i uh, will label uh, that that pod uh, so that it can be identified uniquely if there are like say for example 50 odd pods on your kubernetes cluster um, then the, this this pod will be identified by its name and the label um, so in this case we'll create a pod definition file um, and which will have a spec um, uh, mentioning the container that will be used to create this pod. So the name of the container again we have given the same name as pod, the web app color font, font, and the image that is used in this case is uh, uh, the Docker Hub account name slash the repository name. So in this case we are now pulling the image from the Docker Hub, and earlier we saw how to push the uh, Docker image to the uh, repository. So this will pull the uh, image from a repository Docker Hub repository Docker Hub and uh, there, then there are other definitions like what port it needs to be exposed on and what arguments we need to pass to the container or to the web application uh, so that the web application serves based on the um, these arguments like color uh, currently it's mentioned as red and font is vartana so the web application will show um, this um, uh, page on uh, specified on these arguments so I, i'll show the code of the um, of the python uh, which will have the logic based on this argument uh, where we set up the background of the page and the font now once we create a uh, create a pod having that container um, we won't be able to access the application directly uh, after creating the pod so the application will be um, create uh, the, so the pod will be created under a certain node yeah uh, so if you want to access um, uh, application uh, we have to um, define the service um, which will then expose a port uh, and the host can access the application from that port so in here we can see there is a um, another uh, definition file that will create uh, of kind service uh, we have named it web app color font svc and the type is node port yeah um, the ports mentioned here are uh, the application port 8080 and the target port and the node port is 30008 so basically the host will be able to access based on the node ip address and the port that we we have defined here right uh, now how will the service know which port uh, it needs to serve yeah so it's based on the selector so here we have used app as a key and the value as color font app which we can see in here when we created the pod, um, the, it is labeled as app and you know the key is color font app. So the so service knows that there's a pod created and it should serve the pod based on this um, based on this label. Okay, so basically um, once we create the pod, we create the service, um, the service should be then accessible on the node IP and this port and ultimately we should see the output as uh, one of the web so a web page with the background set as red and, and the font that has been passed as an argument so this should be the output ultimately that will be served through the um, kubernetes cluster so time for a demo so in this demo i'll show again creating an image from the scratch i have already created an application that will i just quickly walk through um, um, and how to create um, image out of out of uh, out, uh, out, out of that application um, a, a custom image and tagging that image pushing it to the docker hub and then you know pulling it uh, for creating the kubernetes uh, plus uh, kubernetes resources 
now this video expects that you already have installed kubernetes um, and you can install minikube which helps for a local um, kubernetes setup and deployment um, and uh, you should also have the docker installed uh, python uh, these are the prerequisites uh, for if you want to just follow this uh, demo so let's let's jump to the demo so i already have a vm with a ubuntu operating system and i have installed a minikube docker and python so let's quickly check the status of minikube so we'll use minikube status command to see if the minikube is up and running all right so we have this and we also have docker installed yeah 20.10.16 version all right so first things first uh, the step one is to um, create an image uh, from what we have no, the web application so i'll just walk you through first what we have for uh, within the docker file that we i showed you earlier in the presentation that we are we have a base image python 3.6 alpine version will this when we create an image it should install the flask uh, expose port and the entry point uh, to that application should be app.py now what does this app.py contain um, is the logic to or functionality to display um, uh, the background color and the font based on the arguments that we specify so i'll open the app.py file and this contains the color codes uh, and the font code that will be used um, if the arguments is not passed uh, to the application that what color and font should be displayed it will randomly pick the color and the in the font and it will pass to the um, to, to the template uh, in this case it's a hello.html uh, it will pass the color and the font um, so it will also check if there are any arguments been passed if those arguments um, uh, uh, it will pick that argument value and pass into the um, to the template yeah so and it will expose the application on port 8080 now if you see the hello html uh, it's expecting the color and the font that needs to be displayed a uh, simple web page uh, html file there now um, that will display uh, the content and set the background color yeah so this is what we have uh, in our folder web app color folder uh, which contains the docker file now based on this we'll create a docker image so let's go back to uh, command line and we already are in the in that folder so to create an image uh, use docker build command yeah provide the folder name so this is the current folder name so it will look for the by default uh, for docker file and let's tag the image as web app color so docker build command will create a, a image within our uh, local machine okay uh, before that if you want to check if there are any images available so there, there aren't any images and uh, of course there won't be any containers yeah so there are no images no containers uh, within the uh, docker host so yeah so let's create um, image docker image for for the application that we have so so when we build it will it should execute the command that we have in the docker file like it will first download the python image uh, install the flask and start start exposing at the port and the set up set the entry point so yeah so step by step it's going and it's uh, downloading the python image first and uh, then it will try and install the flask Uh, there are some dependency issues but this should be fine we can ignore it copy the code uh, to the to the image uh, set it's and it has then set the working directory uh, expose the um, port and the entry point uh, for the application now this image is created in our local machine yeah so let's see docker images come use the docker image command and it has two images one is the python uh, using version 3.6 alpine 
and it also has created our custom image called as web app color. Now, since the uh, custom image is created, uh, we can push this image to the Docker Hub. But before that, uh, maybe let's quickly check uh, whether the web app is working or not by creating a Docker container. And uh, as I said earlier, it will um, it will expose the web application on 8080 port. So to create a container, um, use Docker run command and provide the image name. So in this case, it's a web app color image. Yeah. So here we see uh, the container is created and it's uh, um, and the application is available to be served on this particular uh, IP address and port. So let's quickly check. So it's on 172.17.08.80.80. So here, here you can see. the font that's used. So it's randomly picking the font, monospace, and, and the color red. Since we haven't provided any arguments in the entry point, uh, in the Docker file. But we'll do that in the, um, in the Kubernetes, uh, when we create a Kubernetes resource. So uh, currently, as you see, there's, uh, uh, the application is hosted in the Docker, um, Docker host, and this still, we haven't used Kubernetes. Yeah. So, but we have tested our application and now the next step is to uh, push this image to the repository. So, uh, before we push uh, the, uh, the image to repository, we have to create um, an account in uh, hub.docker.com. So, if you don't have your account, create one. I have created my account here. And then um, we also have to create a repository where that uh, the image that we created earlier uh, I will push that image to this repository. So create a repository, uh, provide a repository name. This you can you can give uh, any name here. So in this case, I am giving a name web app dash color and font yeah, application. Um, so uh, within within this uh, account, we are creating a new repository. Uh, it is set as a public repository. So anybody, anyone should be able to access um, uh, this repo. So create the repository. Uh, it says it's already exists. So let me try again. Yeah, so it has created a new repository, web app, dash color and font. Uh, it sits within the account, Sandeep reporter. So um, the next step is to um, tag uh, the image that we have in our local machine and then um, then push that image to the um, to the docker hub repository so our application is still running so i'll stop the application All right and quickly let me see uh, the container docker container that was created it should be in exited state now because i stopped the application so this was the um, container uh, it created with this image and the entry point was python app.py created three minutes ago and now it's in exited state. So uh, if you see, it won't serve the application because we have stopped the container, all right? Okay, so next step um, is to tag the image. Now, if you see this image is still in our local, and now we want to push this to the Docker Hub. But um, when we push, we have to tag the repository to each, uh, to the same name that we created in the um, uh, Docker Hub repository. So it will be the account name slash your repository name. Yeah. So let's tag the image, or this will create a new image when we tag it. So Docker tag uh, the image name that we already have, web app color, and the tag name. So the tag name will be Sandeep we put a slash web app color and font. So this is the same name that we created in the Docker Hub repository. All right. If the if there is a mismatch, then it won't create or it won't upload the image to this repository. 
So let's tag it. Uh, Locker tag. Yeah, it will create a new image. Uh, let's check. Uh, so yeah, it created a new image which is based on uh, web app color and Python. All right. So so this image still is in the local machine and we haven't yet pushed. So the next step is to push the image. So for that we have to first log in uh, to the Docker. So I have I, I have already logged in uh, before, so that's why it won't ask me the credentials. But ideally, if you are doing this first time, it will ask a username and the password. And once you log in, then it will uh, save these credentials in a config JSON file. Um, and the second time uh, or the next time, you should be it should it won't ask you the uh, credential. So use Docker login command uh, before you could start pushing the image. So if you see, it's authentic. Uh, authenticating um, the login uh, and it's referring to the config.json file where my credentials are saved. Yeah, so I, I'm now connected to the Docker Hub. Uh, yeah, uh, so next command use Docker push command to push the image to the repository, uh, to the Docker Hub repository. So I'll give the names and the same name uh, that we have this image name. Then if you put a slash web app color and font yeah so this image will be now pushed to the uh, the repository yeah okay my bad i made a mistake in typo so now it's now it's pushing the image to docker.io and the account name that we specified and the repository that we mentioned web app color and font so this is now this should be now in the docker so let's quickly check uh, i'll refresh this page earlier we just created the repository we don't have any images and then since i pushed the image um, it should now show uh, the newly pushed image um, in this repository so if you can see it is tagged as latest uh, the image name is same web app color and font and tagged latest so once you have um, uh, different versions so you can provide the tag name with the version 1.0 or whatever version you have and the latest version will be the one which will be always have uh, the latest uh, changes um, of the images so created a few seconds ago so we now have created a docker image on local machine created a new repository in docker hub and push that uh, tag that image the custom image and push that image to the Docker Hub repo. Now, once we have that, once we have the image in the Docker Hub, now we can start creating a Kubernetes resources. So, let's go back to the VM and let's start creating the uh, definition file. Um, to create a Kubernetes resource. So, let me create a YAML file web app pod definition dot yml. Yeah, so I'm creating in the same folder. I'm using Visual Studio code, um, and I have also um, installed the extension YAML language support extension, which will help in uh, the Kubernetes syntax, etc. All right, so. Uh, if you refer my previous videos where I have shown how to create the pod, so I won't go in much detail, but I'll just quickly um, create that create a pod or uh, pod definition file, um, and uh, I'll I'll surely mention uh, any specific um, specific any any specification uh, that will that needs to be supported for this web application. So. The API version, first things first, we have to use the API version. So the version that we will use this here as of this recording is V1. Um, kind is the type of the resource that we are going to um, create. That's a pod. Yeah. And the metadata uh, where we mentioned the name of the pod that will create. So in this case, we have web color and font pod that we want to create. Uh, we'll also provide the labels, as I said, mentioned in the presentation, that um, how will the uh, the service know 
uh, which which pod that needs to be exposed uh, on specific on specific node port. So based on the labels, uh, should be able to expose the uh, web application. So we'll uh, we'll provide a key and value. So it can be any uh, key value or uh, so in this case I'm providing app as a color font app. All right. So we have to provide the metadata and then the specification. So now in the specification we'll provide what, which what containers we need to host in this particular pod. Uh, give the pod name, uh, sorry, the container name. Again, I'll use the same container name as the pod name. So web app color and font. And then we provide the image. Now in this case, we won't uh, use the local image uh, that we uh, that we created earlier in the Docker. But now we are referring to the Docker hub. So provide your account name and repository name and this should download uh, the image from the docker hub repository all right now uh, we already specified the name of the container uh, the image should create it from and uh, since we earlier saw um, the port it exposes uh, uh, is 8080 so we also have to mention the port here um, so the ports that it will use uh, should use the container port that is 8080 right. and also will provide the arguments so the our web application uh, displays uh, the color background color and the font based on the arguments if you don't provide the arguments it will randomly pick um, the color and the font uh, that we saw earlier uh, showed the um, the web application that was hosted in docker so now we are since we are creating a kubernetes resource we will provide the argument so the color should be say for example red and the font we want to mention or we want to display it as vardana so this is the key and the value so let me go back to the app.py so it, it will be looking for those arguments color dash dash color and dash dash font yeah so once we provide that arguments in our definition file it will pick from um, uh, it will pick from the uh, that resource kubernetes resource um, the value that's mentioned for the color and the font and it will try and display uh, 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 based on this based on that argument so it will render the template uh, based on the argument or the color that we have and the font that we have provided. So, yeah, I think that's it for uh, the pod. Uh, so, this should be good to now. We should be good to create a pod. We have mentioned everything that we need the port that we the container needs to be exposed that is 8080 and uh, the argument that we mentioned and um, the repos uh, the image that it should be pull uh, it should be pulling from the Docker Hub repo. Um, let's create a let's create now a Kubernetes resource in the pod. So until now we were working on the Docker. Now we are moving to the Kubernetes. Uh, for creating uh, any of the resource, we should use kubectl command. Um, uh, uh, so in this case, we'll use kubectl. So let's see if there are any pods already. So uh, to check if any pods are already created uh, within the default namespace so uh, use kubectl get pods command so we don't have any pods in the default namespace now namespace are something where we can isolate the res kubernetes resource you can create uh, your own uh, namespace um, uh, by by default it's a it's a default namespace that that the kubernetes will use um, if you want to know more about uh, the namespace uh, please uh, see my previous videos where i have uh, detailed on how to create the uh, namespace and how to create uh, resources within that namespace. So in this case, we'll create a, uh, a pod within the default namespace. So for creating a pod, uh, we use kubectl create command. 
Now we are creating a Kubernetes resource using declarative way. That is, we are creating a YML uh, file uh, the definitions that sit in the YML. You can also use it in imperative way. That is through the command line. Uh, but uh, uh, since we have uh, quite a few specifications, uh, it's good to use the uh, definition file. So uh, the definition file now again sits in the same folder. So web app for definition dot YML. And I'm going to create a new pod using this definition file. So use kubectl create command uh, with the argument dash f. That's a file that will it will refer and provide the file name. So web app pod definition dot yml. Now this should create a pod. So the pod is created. Now let's quickly see um, if it's up and running. So you see the one one pod is created web app color and font. And it is the ready. It is in ready state. It contains one container, and that same container is up and running. Yeah, it was created like six seconds ago. Now, since this pod is created in in the node, um, uh, but uh, once we create a pod, we won't be able to access the web application directly uh, through the the port that we exposed earlier. That is 8080, because um, the host um, won't uh, uh, won't the host won't be able to directly access the container, but it should it, it will be able to access the node. So in this case, we have to create a service. Uh, the service will is a bridge between pod and the node. Yeah, the service will uh, check um, uh, the port that's been exposed. Uh, through the container that is 8080, and uh, the service will then pass on the request to the node uh, where the host will be access will be able to access the application through that node IP and port. Uh, in case of Docker, we saw that we just hosted the container and then you know we were able to um, uh, access the web application because we used Flask, um, uh, which will help uh, the Flask to serve the request. On any specific the port the port that we specified in the app.py, so the app.py has those definitions here. Yeah, so it will run the Flask application and expose the web application on this port. So for Kubernetes, we have to create a service. So let's create a new definition file called as web app color or web app svc definition dot yml. Okay, so now we are creating a service. So again, um, the API version in this case will use v1 as of this recording. Uh, the type of resource that we want to create is a service, and let's give some name to this service. So in this case, I'll use web app color font. SVC. All right, so that's it, and then uh, we provide the specification. So now uh, the type of service that we are creating is the node port. So provide the type as node port, um, and then uh, the ports that will be exposed. So the type of the protocol will be used as TCP. And the port that will be exposed. So this, so this is the port that we are mentioning here is the service port. So we'll use the same port 8080, and the target port is the container port. Again, that is 8080. So basically, the request will come in this way. Um, a host will first hit the node port or the node uh, endpoint. That request will be sent to the service. The service um, is hosted on port 8080, and the service then pass on the request to the container port, that is the target port, that is 8080, and then the request will be uh, served uh, to the um, to the client. Now the important thing is here, as I said, uh, uh, the client or the host won't be able to access directly uh, uh, the web application, so we have to specify the node port. So node port can let's put it as 
eight. Yeah. So the host or the client will use the node IP address and the node port to access the web application. And this request will be sent to the service and the service will send the request to the container to serve, serve the request. So this will be the definition that we need to use for the ports. Now, as I said earlier, how will the service know which pod uh, it needs to po pass the request to? So there can be like maybe in your Kubernetes cluster, there can be 50 or 100 odd pods. Um, so that's why uh, 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 we have to pro provide specification and selector, uh, which will where we defined earlier in the pod, uh, the labels that we used. Uh, this is a kind of a unique identification. So this can be a group of pods. Yeah, suppose you have to scale the pod and you are creating three different or five five pods uh, with the same um, image um, or same containers. So um, the service need to know uh, which pods it needs to serve. So we will be using the label uh, so that the service can identify uh, the pod that or the web application um, uh, or the request that needs to be forwarded to the pod. So use the same label. Uh, the key is app and the and the value is color font app right here. So I'll just copy this. And now the service knows that you know it needs to forward this request to the to this particular uh, pod which has labeled as app color font app. All right. So I think that's it for the service so again uh, uh, a service resource is created within the kubernetes cluster uh, and the type of the service is node port and uh, the selector used uh, the key value pair of the pod uh, so it, it will identify okay it needs to serve this web application which uh, has a functionality of displaying the color and the font and the ports exposed here is the protocol is tcp um, and the node port is 30,008. So the host or the client will use this node port IP and this port uh, to send the request because the, the client is not able to access directly the port and the containers. Um, the node port will then pass this request to the service port, which is hosted on 8080. And the service will pass that request to the container. Um, uh, the pod which is hosted on again 8080 which is the target port, port we have what we say so yeah this is the definition file for the service um, let's create the service uh, on the kubernetes cluster so we'll see if there are any services um, in in this kubernetes cluster so it should be there should be one which is uh, by default uh, created when we install the kubernetes uh, so uh, to check all the services that are available within the default namespace again is kubectl get svc so you can also use service here but uh, the short form short if you want to use the short name use svc so there are there is only one service but that's not a custom one so we'll create our own service so use again create kubectl create command since we are this is again we are doing it a declarative way we have a definition file i use the same command as we created uh, used or we used for the pod so kubectl create file file name of the service so web app svc, SVC definition file so this will create a new service uh, within the default namespace so the service is created now let's quickly check whether the service is created yes we have the web app color font svc the name that we gave earlier um, yeah and uh, it's hosted uh, it will serve on 30,008 port, um, which will pass on the request to port 8080. So now, um, hopefully, the application is ready to serve the request. But now we need to know uh, uh, what is the IP address of the node where uh, this particular uh, uh, service and the pod has been created. So use kubectl describe node command and we want to see, we want to filter it out 
based on addresses yeah so now we see that the IP address that's using is uh, this so the application should be accessible on this IP address and on this port so let's try it 192.168.1900 um, I copy this yeah and on the port 30,008 So we can see there is an error uh, when we tried creating the ports. So when we created the port, we should have seen what is the status of the port. So in here, if you see, uh, there is an error when the port was created. And to check uh, the events, use kubectl describe port and the port name. So in this case, web app color and font. Um, so it was not able to start the container and the reason is uh, at this arguments so we don't need to provide it here for now uh, we can do it later on when we uh, try to create the deployments so I have removed uh, the arguments from here and let's now try again and create uh, the pod so first let's see again CTL port is the status is cra crash loop back off. So first let's delete the pod. So it's kubectl delete command to delete the pod and the pod name. Yeah, it's trying to create. So it has deleted the pod. I have removed the arguments from here uh, for now. And now let's try and create a pod again using the definition file so it's still creating the container uh, yeah and now it's in the running state all right so uh, so our pod is up and running now if there was an error in the pod that's why the page was not able to serve and we also have created a service which will um, pass the request uh, to the port um, and earlier we saw that you know um, the IP address of the node that uh, will serve the request or pass the request to the port so use this kubectl describe node command and we want to see addresses And let's pull the address here. So yeah, it's, it's so basically the node is hosted on on this IP address, and our application within that node is hosted on this port 30,008. So now let's go and try um, to access the application. So here you see um, the app uh, web app is um, application is. Uh, uh, it's been served um, with the with the color uh, blue and the font is what's now. So I haven't provided the arguments, so that's why it will it will pull the um, randomly pull the um, color and and font. So I think that's it for this video. Uh, in this video, we saw a creation of the Docker image, how we push the um, docker image to the docker hub repository uh, we created a kubernetes resource um, to pull that image uh, with certain specification like the container port that needs to be hosted on 8080 uh, but uh, creating only port won't serve the web uh, web page we also created a service uh, which will then pass the request uh, to the port and uh, we use the node ip address and the node port uh, to access the web application and here we have the output uh, in the next video I will try and show how to pass uh, the arguments to this web, web application so that um, 
based on that arguments we, we are able to see uh, the color and the font of uh, 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 that the definition for, uh, definition file has um, we'll use the deployment in this case uh, to pass the arguments so yeah for this video i think uh, that's it and um, Uh, that was uh, the demo and uh, thank you for watching this video i hope um, you are able to um, uh, use this video and create your own images and um, deploy it to the docker hub try to create a kubernetes resources um, i i write quite a few blogs on this so if you want to visit my website on sandeepoti.com and there's a linkedin uh, url uh, if you want to get in touch with me uh, thank you for watching this video uh, and see you in the next. Bye.